Hey everybody, it's Eduardo here on this New Year's Eve's Eve. Struggling, but finally getting this video out to you. Thanks to everybody who took time off of their vacation. I'm sure you all are already off from work and ready, and ready to kick back, so I appreciate the call sheets. All 13 of them. And yes, it's business as usual. With only a handful of, of our regular players, the cream has risen to the top. It's Gamble 24x7. It's Jaybird 1. It's Jaybird 2. It's actually the Jaybird train. Choo choo! <laughs> He's back at it again with the mini train. I guess, you know, we, I guess it's not much of a train since it's only two call sheets, so maybe we'll call it the caboose. The caboose is loose. <laughs> so yeah, so it's G24, the homie, and the loose caboose. Followed by more G24 and your humble servant here. Ju I mean, this is a pretty exciting week. Just six points? Wow. Just six points separates first from fifth. We have another five-day week. Uh, game run, run of game this weekend. Anything can happen. So let's dig into these call sheets and what perfection looks like. Well, it starts off with an optimal stack of the rookie season three. And yes, uh, I mean, I admit, I watched the rookie the first season. It was a good show, to be honest with you. I just, uh, when, you know, when they kicked Afton Williamson into the curb, one of the most interesting characters on the show, Talia Bishop, Sergeant Bishop, I was out. I was out on the show after the first season. And if you want to see about the controversy behind that, just Google Afton Williamson. Hashtag believe women. Anyways, so I do not support the show anymore, but I do know that this show is getting you a lot of bang for your buck. 12600 for a headliner will get you 155 Point four zero points from Richard T. Jones and Nathan Fillion. Equinox headliner stack. All right. In the long run, Idris Elba. This little uh, dramedy from the 80s. From, from 80s London is in... The, is on the sheet. And then headliners from... Last Man Standing. Ugh, I can't believe that show. Well, you know what? I should take that back. I think I've watched half of one show, and I knew it was just not for me. But kudos to y'all. Get your checks. This is your last season. Go out with a bang. Why not? And then Monarca, which I don't know much about, but when it, if it's Netflix and it's, and it's a foreign drama, you know it has got a spot on the perfect call sheet. So... G24 got, looks like he's within 11 points of that. Within 9 points of perfection. So we'll keep a, a, a bonus watch out for his call sheet. If he can hold on, that is. Because we are by far not out of the mix. Uh, Equinox headliner stack. Oh, okay. So he went with, a optimal, with an optimal stack of In the Long Run. Season 3. Monarca... All right, so he's got some of those blockers there to perfection. And RuPaul's Drag Race, I think I, I think I have exposure to that one as well. And then a The Rookie Headliner Stack. And actually, this is bugging me. Let me fix this real quick. Yeah, well, at least for posterity. There we go. All right. No, oh, and now that bugs me even more. <laughs> Hold on a second. Three. Yes, I get this anal, y'all. I want this game perfect for you guys. Just perfect. Okay. Uh, and then Jaybird's Train. Optimal stack of In the Long Run. I like it. Headliner from Cleaning Up, which I think that might have some wiggle. Let's, let's see if it's got some room for improvement. Cleaning Up. Well, not really. It looks like those... Scores are fairly baked in. It's the Metacritic, which is weighing it down. Otherwise, everyone else seems to like it. And what is up with Metacritic? And I, I promise you, when I said about the rules and the scoring of this game, I looked it up. 
66 was the average score coming into this year uh, for like the last, I don't know, five or six years for Metacritic. I do not know why Metacritic's such a hater. Metacritic, I mean, if we just go by our own scoring, if we go by the master score list here, Metacritic's average scores just blow in comparison. I mean, they are just negative Nancys. Just, I mean, they need a hug. You need a hug, Metacritic? I mean, your Metacritic average score is 64.05, which in a sample size of about 700 titles is a full three points lower than Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, where, where's the love, Metacritic? Where's the love? And it is statistically the lowest of our four aggregate scores. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Metacritic. They need some, they need a hug, some love in their life. I don't know what it is. Anyways, back to our action. So Jaybirds, Train, and as a refresher, or if you're new to the show this week, a train is when you have identical call sheets. Like, you know, they're one after the other. It's a high-risk strategy. If you're wrong, even a little bit, you're totally asked out of the money. But if you're right, then you can kind of, you know, dominate and box out some of the, the, the cash spots. So in his little caboose, he's got cleaning up, optimal stack, which is a headliner to... Uh, two headliners, a co-star, and a day player. And then he has exposure to The Last Man Standing, Nancy Travis. And then headliner stack from Monarca and The Rookie. Now, what? Now, not too far behind, G24, the homies. Second call sheet. Looks like swapped out one Equinox for a cleaning up. All right, that's solid. So that, that's what we would call in the biz a 1v1. He only swapped out one spot, really, for some differentiation. And we'll see if it... We'll see if it, you know, pays off for him. Now, I'm only six points behind. What do I got to do? All right, so headliner stack, Equinox. Monarca, nice. The rookie, all right, I see it. Last man standing and in the long run. So I guess I needed more in the long run. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, I was one headliner off with in the long run. And I guess I need help. I guess I need... What do I need? Oh, you know what? Actually, I think the rookie might have a little more room to run. Might have a little wiggle to its game. Because even I mean, these these Metacritic scores are pretty bad, but these IMDb scores are, I believe, aggregates for the season. Season three debuts Sunday, Sunday night. So we may not get any updated user ratings from IMDb until mm, until maybe yeah, the uh, uh, final results which will be on monday and what do i need what does a nine from that episode look like does that let's see if that helps me a nine yes it would it would put me in first so yes let's hope that 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 the sunday night's episode is well received that they've missed their the rookie fingers crossed still not a fan of the producers of that show but we need them to perform get us a nine Nine. Get us a nine. <laughs> uh, parfait DM. Little Stevie. Wow, about 100 points off as well as my second call sheet. What is she working with here? Vikings. Okay. Expensive, but you're paying for points at this point. Interesting. A last man. Oh, last man standing three pack. Almost thought it was an optimal stack. Uh, in the long run, headliner stack. I like that. Oh, here it is. This is what killed you. Call me cat. 55. And I'm not sure if you did this before checking the scores this afternoon, evening, but yeah, call me cat is still born out the gate. A zero from Rotten Tomatoes. I, I mean, that could change. I think it was just one reviewer who gave it, you know, a... Uh, a rotten tomato, so you know, one of one is zero. 
Uh, Metacritic, yeah, it was kinder, I guess, in Turnabout. Uh, and also, this also doesn't debut till Mon till uh, Sunday as well. So we're going to have to see what audiences think of it, if they can bail you out. But yeah, very auspicious beginning, uh, Steph. It's not looking great for you right now. Not looking great. But as always, thank you for your data. All right. And Ring Balls is back. Brown Baby, the draft mom. What is she working with this week? Oh, man. It's just a hodgepodge. All right. Well, Alaska is a drag, was dead in the water. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina could, could gain a little steam. It's coming out, I guess, late tonight. So we'll see what they think of the final season. Although, critics, at least Metacritic, wasn't feeling it as much. Uh, Equinox, solid. Elizabeth is missing. Pricey, but worth it. You're paying for points at this point. Uh, Monarca, I like that. I kind of like Drew Paul, or Drew Paul, RuPaul's Drag Race. It's, it's pretty solid, considering you're, you know, you're kind of paying for points here. And The Minimalists. So this, it, so your entire call sheet's gonna, gonna hinge on The Minimalists. Less is now. I don't have a good feeling about it because it's been hard to find any ratings on it. Now, granted, it comes out on New Year's Day, so maybe that'll kick the whole review culture and audiences into gear, but you need you need some help. Right now, it's, it's, it's hard to even find a score or review or anything about The Minimalists, and we're going into a holiday week, weekend. I don't know. So, I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible. We've seen worse, but yet your whole call sheet hinges on the minimalists. It needs to overperform for you. Okay, now let's check out the perfect low. And yeah, see, all this cat, all this call me cat, uh, Stevie, little Stevie, little Stevie, all this call me cat is the anchor of the low ball call sheet so far. A day player from two ways home. All these well below the default score of 69.5. And then a three pack of Yearly Departed, which got some really bifurcated scores in the game. Check this out. So 100 from Rotten Tomatoes, and I think that was also another like one of one or two of two. No Google user score. Metacritic hated it. And then IMDb users hated it. I don't know. Very confusing. So that's a perfect low. I have a decent 21, po no, 31 point low on G24. The homie. How am I doing it? I'm over indexing on Call Me Cat. I've got a five pack. Uh, I picked up Chilling Adventures of Sabrina season four for salary to make that $75,000 minimum budget spend. And same thing for Yearly Departed. A day player stack there and a day player stack of the two ways home. So this is very much a stars and scrubs. Oh, well, I mean, actually, I'm, I'm actually, it might even be reversed. I mean, how, I guess, what would it be for a low? I guess like a scrubs and stars, I guess, whatever, where placing emphasis on getting your scrubs in and then leveraging up some stars just for, just for a salary. I don't know, I'll think of something. I'll think of a better name for that. And so what does Gamble 24x7 have to do to close the gap? Well, not enough cat to begin with, but the two ways home really could help close the gap for him. Uh, are there any... Let me see if there are any scores out on two ways home. Okay, so two ways home has yet to get a Google user score, and Metacritic hasn't weighed in yet either. Audiences hate this, so if that holds true to form then yeah this could be i mean look, look at what a 35 does for that that oh well it closes the gap let's put it that way it definitely closes the gap um we'll just have to see about that and then he's he's got more dearly departed so if dearly departed continues to sink, that actually helps him more than it helps me because he's got two extra actors 
on his call sheet. All right, well, that's going to do it, everybody. We're going to pack it in. See you in the new year. Our next update will not be until Saturday, January 2nd, 2021. Auld Lang Sign and all that. And as we get nostalgic and reflective, reflective, reflective on this New Year's Eve, Eve, this Cinema Draft game, the Cinema Draft Company, we've been working at it for quite some time now. Some of you guys have been there since the alpha test of the game <clears throat> originally. Hell, back in 2015, when it when it truly was just a spreadsheet game before we had the the alpha test up for Cinema Draft and then had to retool and come back with Draft Stream this year. This is, a, this is all just off the top of my dome. I just really appreciate you guys, like seriously, every single one of you. Putting your time, your energy, and special shout out to the draft mom. Like she takes this game more serious than possibly even her son does. Like she puts in hours of work and research. Yes, her process may be flawed, but her heart is pristine. It is definitely in the right place. I love you, mom. I'm so proud of you for for going every week, just putting in the work to put up a call sheet, whether whether you know it hits. For a win, that one win that we shall cherish, the back-to-back -back weeks where you're in the top five, that was great. And just for supporting this effort and my effort, I really do appreciate you. And I appreciate all of you. As always, thank you for your data. God, thank God 2020 is over with. This movie just, I mean this movie, this, this year was like a movie, a very bad movie. I'm ready for it to be over, just like I'm sure most of you all are. But 2021, man, it's right around the corner. I'm very excited for where we're taking this game, where we're taking this company, where we're taking ourselves. All right? So you guys, be safe. Stay home on New Year's. Just do something nice and quiet. Or if you, have, or if you go out, just go out to, like, to like a place where it'll only be you. Do an Airbnb. Do, you know, a, a quiet hotel room. Just don't, you know, don't be out around, around people. Just protect yourself. We're almost out of this, this pandemic, this all the, the unexpected choices and pivots we had to make throughout this past year. You know, fuck this year. We're over it. Be safe. Bring in the new year safe. Bring in with loved ones. Be happy and healthy. And I'll see you on the other side. Saturday. Late afternoon. With your draft stream Saturday update. The game continues. Thank you, everybody. Auld Lang Syne and all that. Holla at you, boy in 2021.